Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on Unity 3D programming and today we're going to cover the topic of shader graph and this is going to cover two parts. The first part is how do we get shader graph into our Unity project or into a new Unity project because by default you don't have access to shader graph um, with a standard 3D uh, game that you set up. Uh, and then the second part is we're going to cover uh, a very basic shader. We're going to demonstrate how to build a very basic shader in shader graph. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I've seen so many shader graph videos that are like half an hour long and they come out with this really awesome looking shader. Um, but because they're so long and typically very complicated, it seems very intimidating um, because sometimes they kind of just cover the very like basics, do this, do that, and you don't really understand what's going on. And I think if we demonstrate, you can make something very simple and start to see how those things uh, start to apply. Um, Shader Graph is a tool that really is, it's important that you play to learn. So if you start building something, um, and we can build something very simple that's easy to follow, then you realize, oh, I just need to add to this maybe, or work with this in one way, or work with this in another, another way. Um, and the best thing to do, really, the best way to learn it um, fully is to actually watch others build with it um, and watch a, a ton of things. But you also have to build yourself. And that was kind of the point I wanted to bring to the table is let's build our own little shader and make it so simple that anybody could do it. Um, and it's only going to take a few minutes. So that's where we're going to start off at. So to begin, let's talk about how we get shader graph into our project. Again, as I stated, it's not in Unity by default. If you do a standard 3D project, you won't be able to create a shader where you'll be able to use shader graph to modify it. So the easiest way is to simply start with a new project in Unity 2019. Um, and this is what I'm covering. You can still do this in 2018, but I think there is the lightweight render pipeline and the high definition render pipeline, um, whereas 2019 has the universal render pipeline and the uh, high definition render pipeline. So 2019, you want to start a new project and then you'll want to select either the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline. So if you want to add shader graph to an existing Unity project, it's a lot more complicated. And that's why I would recommend you use a new project instead and just import your assets. But for an existing project, you have to go through f at least three steps and possibly four if you have existing assets. But in that existing project, you would need to install a render pipeline project or package. You would need to create a pipeline asset. Then you need to change the project settings to reference the pipeline asset and then lastly, if you have existing um, materials and assets in that project, you want to upgrade the materials to use that pipeline asset. So I'm going to cover the specific steps in the next slide. But before I get there, I want to issue a major warning. Do not change your render pipeline without a backup of your project. If you have a project and you want to start using shaders and you want to change it, I highly recommend you back it up first because what may happen is, and you've probably seen this if you've imported assets, is your assets will all turn pink because Unity's um, color by default um, for when it can't find uh, a material or a suitable material that fits the render pipeline is going to be pink. So you might see all your stuff turn pink. Uh, and if you're at all concerned or don't know how to fix it, um, you'll be stuck with something. And if you don't have a backup, you're going to be frustrated. You're not going to know how to go back. So please, please, please make a backup. Just copy the folder um, before you change your render pipeline. So if you are comfortable with doing it and you think you'll be okay and you have a backup, um, like I said, I'll start off again saying starting a new project is the easiest way. I'd rather you just ex export your assets into a new project but start that new project, select universal render pipeline or high definition render pipeline. But to add to the existing project, when you're in your project, you want to go to the window. So it's at the top menu, click window, go to package manager, and then you're going to another, get another box. Um, you're going to select either the high definition render pipeline, the lightweight render pipeline, or universal render pipeline. And then once you select one of those, click install. You'll probably see different versions for these. 
I would use the universal render pipeline. That's what I'm referencing specifically in my example, um, but using the universal render pipeline and doing 7.5, I think 7.51 is the latest version. So install 7.51 and then click. So select it and then click install. Once you've got the package installed, you're gonna have to go anywhere in your assets folder and you're gonna right click there to go to the create menu. And then you're gonna go over to rendering. You're gonna then select universal render pipeline. And then you're going to select pipeline asset with forward renderer. And you're gonna give it a name. So it's gonna be an asset in your folder. You'll give that a name and keep that name in mind. Uh, you can create multiple ones if you want to, uh, but just keep the one you've created in mind. That's all you have to do. Then you'll have to click on the edit in the menu, go to project settings, you're gonna get a new window. You're gonna click graphics in the left-hand side and you're going to select the scriptable render pipeline setting. So you'll have to select a scriptable render pipeline setting. And then it's gonna prompt you with the dialogue to locate that render pipeline asset that you just created. So whatever you name that, you're gonna pick that and now it's gonna start using the universal render pipeline. So this last step is optional, but you'll probably have to do it if you have existing assets. But when you have materials and assets that are already in your project, you need to convert them. So you're gonna to go to edit on the menu. You're gonna to go to render pipeline, universal render pipeline, and then upgrade project materials to universal materials. And once you click on that, it's gonna give you a warning and you're gonna say proceed. And then it's gonna upgrade all of your materials so that you're using them through that pipeline asset. So out of the way, let's get on to our demonstration. Okay, so here I am in our universal render pipeline setup. And by default, they give you this scene uh, with this construction site. And what we can do from here is um, really the first thing I wanna do is I wanna add an object that I'm gonna apply the shader to because I don't wanna apply it to anything in here. Um, I just wanna demonstrate what I've got without, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, additional information there. Uh, so we're not getting mixed up on what's going on here. So what I'm going to do in the sample scene is just create a 3D object and we're going to add a cylinder. And I'm going to reset the transform to 0, 0, 0. Um, and I'll probably do the scale to like oh, 0.5 on all this uh, because uh, I want it to be able to fit in here somewhere. Uh, and I'm going to drag it. I'm pressing control and dragging to do like these uh, snap values to one. If you're not familiar with that, you can use control and it's gonna snap to one unit um, or not one unit, but like quarter units basically. So I'm gonna put it right back in the middle. Um, ignore these little balls. These are the light probes. Um, the ones that are popping around, these are light probes. They're just basically kind of um, evaluating the scene for, for lighting settings. Um, they were put in right here this with this light probe group. So um, it's making modifications based on that. You can basically just ignore that. Uh, I'm not gonna cover that in detail. There is a cool video that Unity has that talks about um, how light probes work and I'll, I'll link to that in the description below. Um, it was really a good demonstration of a few things, um, but I'll link to that below if you wanna see what light probes are for and how they work. Um, but anyway, so with our cylinder here, I wonder if I could just disable that and have it stop doing that. There we go, I'm gonna disable it for now. Um, and I'm gonna resize my gizmos so that they're kind of out of the way. Um, but here we have this sim simple cylinder. All it is is just one default material and we're gonna apply a shader graph material to it um, or a shader material. Um, but for now I'm gonna show you with all the, the shader graph, what you're gonna do um, to create that shader first, um, I'm gonna just create a folder here and we're going to call it, I'll just call it BG Demo, Fickle Axis Demo. And I'm going to create, so I'll right click in here, create, shader, and a PBR graph. And we're just going to name this, um, I'm going to say a hollow, hologram. And uh, we'll make a shader that kind of, you know, emulates a hologram to some extent, but it's going to be very, very basic. Before I get into that though, I do need to grab a couple of assets. I'm gonna drag them in and show you what I'm gonna do with these. So one second while I go grab those. Okay, so all I've done is dragged in two PNG files. One's just a black and white tile, very simple. 
um, and these are 32 by 32, and then one's just a bunch of horizontal lines. So the thing that I wanna do, I'll show you a difference here uh, in just a minute, but I'm gonna change these wrap modes to clamp on both of these, and apply um, to each of that, and then I also am gonna change the filter mode to point, no filter, and I'll explain why in just a second. We'll actually demonstrate that once we have it in the, um, in the shader. So let's go to our hologram shader here. If you double click on it, it's gonna bring up the node editor. So the node editor has this PBR master here. And so we'll talk about a few things here. You're gonna get a preview down here on the bottom right. And I'm gonna kind of resize everything so we get a little bit more space to work with here. But this PBR master um, kind of dictates several things. But the things that you're gonna be most concerned with at first is gonna be your albedo. And that's really just going to be your texture uh, and your or your color. If it's just a solid color, it's going to be a color. Um, you have an emission. The emission is going to be if it lights up or not. Um, and then uh, you have your alpha. So your alpha is transparency. And I'm going to make with a hologram an alpha. I could also use emission. Uh, but what I might just do is set this to like a static value. What we'll do first on the PBR master is by default, you actually can't make this transparent unless you click on this gear. And you're gonna see here like your workflow is metallic, your surface is opaque, I need to make this transparent. So I'm gonna leave it there, call it transparent, and then click that gear to make that go away. And now we have this alpha that I wanna change. Um, and that's the first step, how do I make these stripes, like a hologram, right, is kind of like you see solid lines and then you see stripes. Well, what we're gonna do first is we're going to add in a new node, and we're going to say, you can search if you're looking for something, and I'm gonna say texture. But what you wanna do is texture 2D. So this sample texture 2D is what you actually wanna select. There's a lot of these. Um, I would recommend reading Unity documentation, but if you want just a simple texture to be applied, you want to do sample texture 2D. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to play a little trick here um, and and get you know explain this here. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to select is right here this texture T2. If I click on this, it's going to let me search for the texture I want to apply. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the black and white lines. I'm gonna close that. So that's what I'm gonna use here. And you'll see here I have this RGBA, the RGBA. I don't actually have an alpha channel on this. I just use black and white. So I'm gonna take this RGBA and drop it into the alpha. And you're gonna find like, um, it may not make a whole lot of sense, but you typically you wanna match the colors, right? You see blue to blue. Well, I've taken a purple and a, matched it to a blue, which is something you can do. And those are things you're gonna have to just play with to, to understand what can apply to what. How can we use one thing or another to make it work? So looking at this right now, it looks really hideous um, and it's hard to really understand what it's doing. So if we go over here and save it first, let's go back to our scene. And now we're gonna create material and we're just going to call this hologram mat. And I'm going to basically just drag this hologram onto the hologram mat. And you'll see, okay, there's our hologram mat. Now what happens if we apply it here? And there you see it. The black lines basically are transparent because I basically put the texture into a flat material. So, um, or into the alpha channel, sorry. I took the texture and applied it to the alpha channel and so it took all the black and it made it transparent. So now you'll see, oh, I've got the stripes and you can see that barrel uh, is now just a bunch of horizontal stripes. And on the top, you know, you have them going um, horizontally across there as well. But uh, so quite clearly this shader is not perfect, but it was really just for the point of demonstrating how that works. We created an alpha channel um, or we applied a texture to an alpha channel and this was the end result, very simple. Now we could even go a little bit further and we can say, okay, we want our albedo here. Well, another thing we can do under our hologram, we have some of our variables. We'll say plus here, or we're gonna say color. And I'm gonna say, instead of default mode, HDR, 
And now I have this color variable, which means I can change this. So I'm going to drag this out here. And this color can now be applied to our albedo. And now I can go into, you can see there at preview, now that color is darker by default instead of being pure white like this. We're applying a color to it. So we'll save the asset, go to scene. And now under our material, we have an option to change our color here. And I'm going to change this to like very, very, you know, typically when you see holograms, they're usually pretty bright blue. Um, and then they also have, they're really bright, right? And there you have it. Now we have something that kind of looks like a hologram or a laser grid, um, but just that simple to get started. And so really what you see here is we've just applied a color to our albedo. You could apply a texture to your albedo as well. You could, you know, if you wanted to actually have a real hologram, um, this would get way more complex. So this is the point where I kind of wanted to stop. I wanted to say, hey, let's just make a hologram for a shape. Um, but you could apply a texture. You could have this transparency on the texture. Um, you could do all sorts of things. And you can see it starts to get complicated. Now, Shader Graph um, has a lot of different nodes too. If you look here, um, if you create a node, you're going to see you have options like math, um, and there's like, uh, you know, length, log, modulo, things like that. Um, it's it's going to give you lots of different um, options for how you change um, the way something looks. Um, and so that's the point where I say start watching other videos, but understanding that there's always going to be a few key concepts and there's a lot of documentation to explain specifically what these things are and the best way to really start understanding what all these things mean is to just play with it and to see how do i get you know how do i get transparency now you know there's alpha okay so going back to that original black and white interlaced image that i had created remember how i'd earlier said that we wanted to change our filter mode to point no filter i want to show you why i did that and the differences uh and, and why that matters um, the clamp doesn't matter so much that just means that we're going to use the entire image and it's actually going to just go right to the edge and stop but the filter mode for the point to point um, or the point with no filter basically just says the image as is. We're not going to do any kind of uh, interpolation or uh, adjustments mathematically to the way it looks. If we were to change this to bilinear, you'll see that, and we're going to apply this, you'll see that now um, the texture changes. And what it's doing is it's trying to smooth it out. It's trying to, to blur it effectively um, to look more accurate to what it might actually look like in 3D because what we're doing is taking a texture and applying it to a 3D object. And so in order to try and compensate for those changes, it blurs it a little bit. But for the purpose of the demonstration, what that actually does is it makes it... Mm, makes it a little bit too blurry. We want it to look kind of hard and, and crisp. So I did point no filter to make it look like that. And that's why we changed that at the beginning. Although it does look intimidating at first as you start to play with them and understand what each thing does, you get a better idea as you go along. And what I would recommend is starting small and then building up until you start to understand just a little bit at a time. I want something very simple. You keep working on it and you get better and better um, and you get more complex. You start to realize how things fit together. Um, and then hopefully, as you watch those videos, going back and looking at some of the ones I've watched in the past, they make more sense to me today simply by going in and just building them and, and tweaking them and toying with them. And it starts to make more sense that way. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.